Hey everyone and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. In this tutorial I'm going to look at how to make a 2D skin selection menu where you can cycle through different player skins and select one to hit play and load you into the game world as that player skin that you've selected. Like shown on the screen this is what the end product will look like. This is easily adaptable and this is just for you to learn the basics and take it further so I've hopped into a fresh unity scene to get started. First of all I'm going to import my assets. What you'll need is a background if you wish, and then some UI buttons, or you can use Unity's default UI buttons. I've made a next back and play button, and then you're going to need a few skins. I've made four, and I'm going to go ahead and cut these in the sprite editor so that there's four individual skin sprites. Hit apply and close this window down. As you'll see, I've got all four of my skin sprites, and I'm also going to do the same for my UI sprites select multiple and then cut them. Now I'm going to assemble my skin selection menu by dragging the background image in and scaling up to size of the screen. I'm quickly going to change my game's aspect ratio so that it fits perfectly. Now you're going to want to take your very first skin sprite and drag this into the hierarchy so that it shows up in the scene. Once you've positioned this where you're happy with it, you're going to rename this selected skin. We're going to make a prefab out of this so that the player can change the prefab. So what I'm going to do is quickly drag this into the assets folder to make a prefab out of it. You'll see there I've got my little skin. Then I'm going to create a new UI canvas element inside of our game. As a child of the canvas game object, I'm going to create a new UI button. I'm going to call this next button and I'm going to delete the text as a child of it because I've got my own UI drawings. I'm going to drag in my next button sprite and I'm going to resize this to the size that I'm happy with. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to move this over to where I want it positioned inside of the game menu. And then I'm going to duplicate this button using Ctrl D and I'm going to rename this one back button. I'm going to do the exact same by dragging in the back sprite and resizing it until I'm happy. Lastly, I'm going to duplicate my back button and I'm going to call this play button because this is going to be the button that we hit play and spawn in our scene with the skin selected. Once you're happy with how your menu looks, we can get onto the coding. So to do this, start by creating a new empty game object and I'm going to call this Skin Manager. I'm going to add to this a new script and it's going to be called Skin Manager again. And I'm going to open up this script inside of Visual Studio to start coding. First of all, I'm going to import a few things. I'm going to start by importing Unity Engine Management and then I'm going to import using Unity Editor. This is important. Then I'm going to create some variables starting with a public sprite renderer called SR and then a new public list of type sprite called skins and this is going to be the list that holds all of our skin sprites so that our player can cycle through them. To switch between skins we need to keep track of what skin is currently selected so to do this I'm going to create a private int called selected skin and I'm going to set it to zero initially. Lastly I'm going to create a public game object called player skin which is going to be the skin for our actual player and then I'm going to create a public function called next option which will be run when we click our next button. When we run this function, we want to move to the next skin, so I'm going to set selected skin equal to selected skin plus one. And then if our selected skin number is greater than the amount of skins we have, I'll set it back to zero so it goes back to the start. We also want to, of course, set our sprite render to the selected skin. I'm going to copy this entire function because we're going to need to do the same for the back function. And I'm going to paste it below and obviously change the name to back option. We need to make sure to change the plus to a minus so that we are going back the way. And we also need to change our if statement to less than zero. And then if so, then we set the selected skin to the final skin minus one. Lastly, we're going to create a function called play game so that we can actually submit our choice of skin and load the next scene. So I'm going to do this by typing prefab utility dot save as prefab asset, then player skin, and then make sure to put the path of your skin select prefab. So for me, it's assets slash selected skin dot prefab. Then we're going to use scene manager dot load scene and the name of your actual game scene. Back inside of Unity on our skin manager game object, we need to drag in our selected skin to the sprite render and player skin slots in the inspector. Now I'm going to lock the inspector on our skin manager game object, then select all of my skin sprites and drag this into the list so that they all go in at the same time. Now if I hit play to test this out, you'll see that we don't actually switch between the skins yet. That's because we need to add the functions that we just coded to the buttons. So select all of our buttons and obviously unlock the inspector and then add an on-click event to all three. Drag in the skin manager to this object and then on each one for the next button, select the next option function. 
the back button, the back option function. And then finally, on our play button, we're going to want to select our play option, which submits what our final skin choice is. Then if we hit play to test this out, even though we don't have a new game scene yet, we're going to cycle through and you see it cycles through all of our skins. And if we hit play, we'll load up an error. This is an easy fix. Just head to the scene folder, hit create, and then create a new scene and call this main game or whatever you ran through the script as your scene name. Drag this to the build settings and then open this up to start coding our actual player in the game. So first of all, I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to call this main player. We're going to add a sprite component to this player, but it's important not to drag in any skin as we select that through the menu. To actually set our main player's sprite, what we need to do is create another empty game object and I'm going to call this one game manager. To this, I'm going to add a new game manager script and open this up inside of Visual Studio. First of all, I'm going to start by getting rid of our update function. I'm going to create a public game object called selected skin and then a public game object called player and then lastly a private sprite called player sprite. Inside of our start function I'm going to set our player sprite equal to our selected skin dot get component sprite renderer and then dot sprite. Then to set the player in the game sprite I'm going to use player dot get component sprite renderer and I'm going to set this dot sprite equal to our player sprite. That's all we need for our skin selection script, so I'm going to save this and head back to Unity where we need to assign some variables. Drag in our selected skin prefab into the selected skin option. I'll quickly turn our main player into a prefab and drag this into the player slot. Save this scene and then head back to our menu scene. If I hit play to test all our code out, you'll see that I can cycle through all the different skins and then select one and hit play and it loads that exact skin into the game. I'm quickly going to add a player controller script to my main player. You can pause the tutorial and copy the script, but I'd recommend getting a better one as this is extremely basic. And then I'm going to head back in and you'll see that we have player movement. Obviously now you can add any mechanics you wish to your player prefab. If I cycle through and pick a skin and hit play, you'll see I load into the game and I can move around perfectly. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it all works for you. Don't forget to subscribe guys, it really means a lot and it helps the channel. Also a huge thank you to my awesome patrons, the link to my Patreon will be in the description. Thanks guys!